This is Witchbase News for Friday the 28th of June 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week Frontier drop full specifications for the Type 8 and show the ship in game for the first time. Titan Indra gets a 1 week stay of execution and FDev announces release windows for both the Type 8 and Powerplay 2.0. If you haven't already remember to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell to make sure you see all our videos and community posts and if you'd like to help support the channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. It was widely expected this week that Thursday would see the next Thargoid Titan on the AX community's very exclusive Please Leave the Galaxy list Indra receiving a very warm invite to its own very special celebratory barbecue. At the start of last weeks weed whacking cycle the almost certainly really rather nervous Titan Indra had some 32 systems in its slimy grasp. Given the rate at which players are able to burn through controlled systems this week should have seen the hateful hollyhock stripped of support and completely vulnerable meaning the full force of players and their nanite torpedoes would as I speak these words be weighing down on the 5th titan to fall since the arrival 18 months ago of the 8 colossal Thargoid motherships. Sadly this week it wasn't to be the case and Indra was still clinging on to 11 systems when Thargs Day swung around. It does however mean that the Titans inevitable but spectacular exit is delayed by just one week unexpected occurrences notwithstanding of course and by this time next week we should be well into the Indra having the absolute stuffing kicked out of it phase of the Thargoid invasion. As was the case with previous titans in order to qualify for the decal and other rewards you'll need to do your damage to the gloopy beast in the 7 days before it's killed. Any time from Sunday the 30th of June onwards and you should be in a comfortable place. Unlike Indra who will be in a very uncomfortable place all week but fortunately not for very long thereafter. Once Indra is swept aside there will then be just 3 Thargoid Titans left threatening the bubble. It was promised last month and this month it arrived right on schedule. On Thursdays Frontier unlocked livestream Frontier showed off the incoming but still work in progress Type 8 medium freighter in game for the first time. On the stream which was hosted by FDevs Arthur and Chantel the footage shown was without any audio. We're guessing that's still very much part of the work in progress bit. But a lot more information was released about the ships internal specifications and abilities than I think most people us included were expecting which was a pleasant surprise. Arthur clarified that when he'd previously referred to the ship as a fighter freighter that was very much a slip of the tongue and not intentional and it was reiterated on a couple of occasions that perhaps getting into a fight proper in the T8 might not be advisable. It is then designed to be very much a dedicated freighter first and foremost. When it comes to defence the freighter does as you'd expect still sport hardpoints, 6 in fact. 5 of them are small and are focused in the forward firing arcs. On the footage released by Frontier we can see 2 hardpoints directly either side of the cockpit glass on the main fuselage. There appear to be a further 2 slots, one on each of the prominent forward facing arms of the ship that will make those clearly visible from the cockpit when facing forward. Arthur mentioned that a fifth hardpoint will deploy from the square depression that is centrally placed directly above the cockpit and the largest medium sized hardpoint Arthur described as underslung at the rear of the ship. It was underlined a few times during the stream that the T8 is fast and 
given its size and functionality, quite manoeuvrable. It is perhaps a reasonable assumption then that the rearward underslung hardpoint is specifically suited to deploying mines as the ship attempts to make best its escape. The ship is SCO enabled just like the Python Mark II was meaning it will handle better in SCO and chew through way less fuel and generate less heat in SCO than a non SCO enabled vessel with an SCO drive fitted. When directly compared to the Python Mark II the T8 is slower in supercruise overcharge but more fuel and heat efficient than its sleeker deadlier predecessor. And Arthur said on the livestream that cargo wise without a shield fitted if you maxed out the ships optional slots for cargo she'll haul 406 cargo units. The Type 8 contains 9 optional internal slots and here is how those slots break down. It contains 1 size 1, 1 size 2, 1 size 4, 2 size 5s, 3 size 6s and 1 size 7. The core internals are actually roughly equivalent to the Type 7 and those break down as follows. The power plant, thrusters, frameshift drive and fuel tank are all size 5. Life support and sensors are size 3 and the power distributor is a size 4. The only place its core slots differ from the Type 7 in fact is the life support which is a 4 on the larger vessel. There was no mention on the stream of the utility slots so it's possible FDEV may still be in the design and balance process with those. Arthur also directly confirmed that the moving nacelles are indeed a measure to reduce the ships footprint upon landing which is what allows it to squeeze into a medium pad. Getting a much closer look at the ship on the livestream was fascinating stuff. As Zach had mentioned on a previous stream most of the weapon slots are indeed directly visible from the cockpit on those forward arms which also interestingly appear to house some of the ships heat sinks. Away from a dedicated freighter the final player testing in game will undoubtedly bring out some interesting builds but there is already speculation that the Type 8 might also make an ideal laser mining ship at the very least. The livestream ended with one of what are becoming now customary Arthur told me mic drop moments. The Type 8 is arriving in August. And whilst it hasn't been specifically stated yet we're assuming that paid early access is the new normal for ships arriving into Elite Dangerous now. Personally I love the used industrial look of ships like this. I've always been a trader and a freighter guy at heart and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Roll on August. In our previous story I mentioned Arthur Tolmy deployed one of his now signature mic drop moments at the end of the livestream this week when he revealed that the Type 8 will be arriving in August. That wasn't the only piece of new information to arrive in the mic drop moment this month however. Whilst August will see the Python Mark II come out of early access and become available for all to purchase for in game credits and the Type 8 will arrive we're assuming in early access in exchange for ARCs, September has an arrival all of its own in store. Arthur announced that what could potentially be one of the biggest changes the core game has ever seen certainly since the launch of Odyssey at least Powerplay 2.0 will launch sometime in September. It's worth a reminder at this point that aside from the end of the Thargoid War, the arrival of the Python Mark II, the Type 8 freighter and Powerplay 2.0 there are still two more ships at least due to arrive this year and an as yet unannounced new feature coming to the game before the year is out. No matter how the scheduling for all that works out between now and the end of December it's going to be a very busy 6 months in Elite Dangerous. Have you decided how you're going to kit out the Type 8 and what you'll use it for? How many Titan attacks have you successfully participated in so far and will you be jumping into Powerplay 2.0 in September? Let us know in the comments below. 
that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.